All right, so I know we joke around a lot on this channel about Jim Miller. You know, the fact that he, he gave me some serious problems in, uh, in the UFC 4 career mode. But besides all that, in my opinion, uh, Jim Miller should definitely go down as an MMA great, right? He is one of the, the greatest fighters that, that we've definitely seen in MMA and his accomplishments. If we were to look at his accomplishments, not just that, but like the fact that this dude has fought damn near everybody, right? If we were to take a look at that, how long he's been in the game, the fact that he can still even be competitive, you know, with how much the game has progressed. He's definitely a mixed martial arts great. I don't care what anybody says. Um, if you take a look at this article right here, it talks about some of the things that Jim uh, has accomplished. And if he does get this win against Jared Gordon uh, June 3rd this weekend, that's going to get him the most victories in, uh, in, in UFC history at 25. Uh, right now, says Jim Miller competes in his 42nd UFC bout, the most appearances in company history. His 39 lightweight appearance is also a divisional record. Uh, Jim Miller's 20, 24 victories in UFC competition are most in company history. Uh, Miller's 21 victory in UFC lightweight competition are the most in divisional history. Um, he also has 16 stoppages, which is tied with Donald Cerrone for second most in the company behind Charles Oliveira. Um, he's got 14 stoppages in the UFC lightweight competition, which is the most in the division's history. He's got 11 submission victories in the UFC, which is tied with Damian Maya for second most in company's history behind Charles Oliveira. Um, he's got nine victories in the UFC lightweight division, uh, which is second behind, again, Charles Oliveira. Um, right there, it says his 45 submission attempts in the UFC are the most in the company's history. And his 12 fight night bonuses for UFC lightweight bouts are third most in division's history behind Joe Lozon and Donald Cerrone. Um, the man has accomplished a lot. He has accomplished a lot. And I think he deserves all the respect in the world that he gets. Um, if you take a look at his his record right here, I mean, we're taking a look at 35 wins, 17 losses. But it, these this 17 losses alone does not tell the whole story, right? Take a look at some of the guys this man has been in there with. Of course, he has a submission win over Donald Cerrone. He lost to Cerrone in the past. Um, he's fought Charles Oliveira. The man has fought Clay Guida. He's fought Dan Hooker. He's fought Anthony Pettis, Dustin Poirier. Uh, of course, Michael Chiesa, Benil Dariush. Donald Cerrone, Nate Diaz, Benson Henderson. This dude has fought them all, man. Gray Maynard, when Gray Maynard was a was was a beast, right? Frankie Edgar, he's fought like he's fought everybody, and it, it's it is absolutely impressive. You know, it's really impressive. Of course, his last loss was against Alexander Hernandez in twenty uh, in February. And I'm definitely uh, rooting for him. R definitely rooting for him to get this win against Jared Gordon. I don't think it's going to be a, an easy fight. No fight really is at, at the end of the day. But I'm, I'm really hoping that Jim can go out there and put one more submission on the uh, on his record. Um, that said, though, I am going to try to do uh, a fighter show. Just, just a quick showcase for, for Jim Miller. Try to get at least one good fight. It's been pretty difficult to find fights lately, but it is what it is. I'm gonna go search right now. Hopefully, we find something, and uh, let's 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 try to do a, a good showcase for uh, for the man, Jim Miller. I'll be right back with you guys. All righty, boys, we are facing Anthony Showtime Pettis. Yeah, Jim Miller versus Showtime Pettis. Let's go, let's go, let's go. As we talked about in the intro. Jim Miller. Oh, wow. <laughs> Young Guap, you are starting things off like a crazy person. He is starting things off like a maniac. But you know what? He is using Showtime, so he's got to do that. Now with Jim Miller... Course. I'm going to be looking to grapple when I can. Looking to strike as well. He's a veteran. That's the best way to describe him. He's a veteran. He's got a lot of experience in the game. He's seen it all. He's fought every single style imaginable. The jiu-jitsu guy, the striker, the kickboxer, the boxer, the wrestler. 
He's He's been there, man. He's been there, done now. He's fought the guys that are his size. And he's fought the guys that are bigger than him. You know? It's... I'll tell you guys, man. Anytime... Anytime we talk about fighters like this who've had so much experience in the game and have been fighting for a very long time, it's hard for me not to think about, you know, their health and just the fact that, man, like... When you have as many fights, I mean, 42 fights, I believe this man is going to have when he fights Jared Gordon. 42, man, that's a lot of fights. There we go. It's like, it, it's what I think about when I think about someone like Alistair Overeem, right? Now, the good thing with Jim is Jim Miller is not a heavyweight. He hasn't taken the sort of damage that Overeem has taken in his career. I mean, Overeem has been knocked out so many freaking times. There is no way Alistair Overeem, well, I just, I don't think, I think it's, I think it is unlikely that Overeem is going to go through the rest of his life without having um, some constant, so some side effects of that. You know what I mean? I, th I think there will definitely be side effects, whether it's CTE, it's something, something. You're not taking all that damage and walk away from that scot-free. There's just no way, in my opinion. Let's see. Probably just gonna go for the on bar if he goes, if he denies, if I can deny him once again. Oh! Okay. Flip him right away. You know, so like, someone like Jim Miller, man, it's, it's something that it's hard not to think about. Like, he's been fighting for so long, he's taking so much damage who knows man who knows who knows what could happen who knows what could happen I don't know if this one's gonna be his last I don't remember if he talked about it but it doesn't really seem like he's slowing down too much right it doesn't seem like he's slowing down too much I think when it comes to fighters that have had fighters that have had a lot of fighting experience, I think I think it's worse for strikers, right? It's much worse for strikers. If you're the type that is a wrestler and most of your fights have involved you dragging opponents to the ground, pinning them and just, you know, taking as little damage as possible, like you, you know, you you definitely do take damage no matter what. But if you're a wrestler, if you're a grappler, and that's what you want to do, and you know how to get that takedown without incurring damage, it's much better than being like a kickboxer. In every single fight, you're you're getting hit, man. Someone like Justin Gaethje. Dustin Poirier is another one, man. Dustin Poirier. Uh, Max Holloway, some of these guys, Max Holloway currently leads the pack when it comes to significant strikes absorbed. Like, that is, when it comes to records, that is not a record you want to have, man. You know? Oh, I'm, I've been hit the most out of everybody. Which is a big reason why I hesitate to put Max Holloway as the best best boxer in, in in the UFC. You know, he's claimed to be that. A lot of people have said he is because of his because of his style, you know, how he's able to but in my opinion he's not. Like I don't know how I don't know how you can be the best boxer while getting hit as much as as much as he gets hit. It just doesn't make any sense to me. That just defeats the whole entire purpose of what boxing is. Oh, that was beautiful. Some of you have asked me to do a head, head movement tutorial. Um, it's it's going to be kind of hard to do a tutorial like that, but I mean, I, I guess I could try. 
In the meantime, though, what I will tell you is there are certain strikes that you can probably, you could read on reaction. Like, you could react to a, a roundhouse head kick. You could react to an overhand. Um, you could react to a wheel kick. You could react to strikes with... You can react to strikes that you can clearly see coming from a mile away. Strikes with a very visible startup frames and, and all that you could react to. But it's very hard to react to, to other strikes in the game. Uppercuts. Um, uh, you can react to spinning elbows as well. Because when they're about to spin, you could, you could see the turn. Um, but there, again, there's certain strikes in the game that's very difficult to react to. The jabs, the straights. The cross, I mean, straight and cross are the same thing. The hooks, hard to, but what you can do is you can make educated guesses. You can make educated guesses based on what you've discerned, what you've observed, and just what is normally human nature. For example, hold on. Damn, that took forever. Holy crap. For example, when you look at boxers, rope a or whatever, and they're like, they're keeping their hands down and they're moving their head. If you notice, they go, they typically go left, right, left, right, or right, left, right, left. And the reason for that is because they know that the punches that will be coming at them will most likely be alternating punches. So if I'm going to throw, there we go. If I throw a jab, I'm most likely going to throw a cross. If I throw a left hook, I'm most likely going to throw a right hook. Or if I throw a punch with my left hand, I'm most likely going to throw my next punch with my right hand. So that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, it gives you an idea of what's coming. In the game, if a player throws a 1-2, most likely what's coming next is going to be What's coming next is going to be a round strike. Because what's the most common combination? What's the most common punch people will throw after a 1-2? Well, the hook. Jab, straight, hook. Boom. Okay, where's my stacked? That was close. That was very close. You know? And that's what's going to help you to uh, to move your head in the game. A lot of times it's just, it's about like you um, making educated guesses. All right, my opponent just threw, he just threw a one, two. He is most likely going to throw a round strike. Well, how can you... How can you evade a round strike? You can either duck or you can pull. Go for one of those. If a player throws a one-two, you know, you might expect the head kick to come after that. So duck, right? So you try to duck. That's really all I can tell you. Um, and the same thing goes. Same thing goes. When, when you, man, stop taunting. What are you doing? Same thing goes when you get rocked, right? When you get rocked, most opponents, most players, including myself, will start their combination to finish you with a jab. So a lot of times, the best, like when you get rocked, slip. The moment you see them entering the pocket, just slip. Because it's most likely going to be a jab. You slip, the jab slips, that buys you some time. Um, you can go slip, duck. Because when you slip, and you duck, the duck can counter. Oh, look at this. I totally forgot that it was three rounds. Oh, I thought I thought I was about to get another round. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Yo, I completely drew a blank and forgot that it was a three. All righty. So we're going to leave it there. Like I said, I'll, I'll do a video talking about head movement uh, a bit later. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, definitely leave a like on it. It, it helps out the channel. 
And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later with a brand new one. As always, stay safe. Peace out. Have a good one.